New this morning, we're staying on top of some of the biggest stories in our nation's capital and how our elected officials are making a difference. Joining us live now, Senator James Lankford, thanks so much for being with us this morning. One of the big stories yesterday, of course, former President Trump turned himself in for a second time. He's now the first president to face a federal indictment. What are your thoughts on this and how polarizing do you think this case is even in your own party? Yeah, it, it's exceptionally polarizing, not only with the party, within the uh, country as well, as people have lots of attitudes. The first thing that I hear from most people is, okay, so President Trump was indicted for classified documents. President uh, Biden had classified documents in three different locations. He was asked numerous times, if you turned everything over, they kept searching a house and finding more, finding more. And so all the questions come up about equal justice under the law. So there's a lot that we've got to do. We are a nation that everyone is accountable under the law. Everyone is accountable under the law. We just want to be able to make sure it's all applied equally and fairly to every single person as well. Governor Kevin Stitt announced he is backing Florida Governor Ron DeSantis for president. What are your thoughts on that endorsement and where do you stand at this early stage? Yeah, I'm actually not going to endorse in this race at all. I plan to be able to stay out of it. A lot of, got a lot of good friends that are actually in this race. And uh, so I want to see a lot of good people get out there. The good thing is we've got a lot of good ideas and Republicans have a very deep bench. So there's a lot of good folks out there with a lot of good ideas that will actually help the country. The topic of AI is heating up in Washington. What can you tell us about a bill that you just introduced regarding transparency? Yeah, you know, one of the things I'm trying to be able to emphasize uh, not only to government, but to the American people as well, is if government chooses to use any AI to be able to gather data and to be able to process letters, whatever it may be, that make a decision based on what happens to the American people, the American people should know that and they should have the ability to be able to challenge the data behind it. What I hear a lot of people say is that they're not afraid of AI. They're grateful that there's different machine learning and things that's happening to be able to help us in so many different areas. What they're concerned about is the data behind it. If the data that is bad behind it, then it's going to be a bad output. And if that directly affects you, you want the ability to be able to challenge it and say, hey, a human didn't make this decision. This was all made with data. I don't know if that data is accurate or not. And I want to be able to make sure that the data is accurate in the process. So that's important to lay the groundwork early. I don't know of any government agency that's using AI at this point, but I want to set the parameter early to be able to say American people need to know that a person is behind decisions and that uh, the data can be challenged. Definitely a hot topic right now. Can you give us an update on the numbers at the southern border? Yeah, the numbers continue to remain very high. The administration is announcing right now that the numbers are way down at the border, but what they're not saying is they've actually split the border numbers into two different lists. Now, if you use their app to be able to register before you come across the border, they're not counting you as an illegal entrant. But the fact is, if you cross between ports of entry or out of ports of entry using their app or not using their app, they're still released into the country exactly the same going through all of that process. So we still have 4,500 to 5,000 people a day illegally crossing the border. That's the same numbers that we've had for a long time. So the numbers haven't dropped. Senator James Langford, as always, thanks so much for being with us this morning. Thank you. Good to see you again. Good to see you.